morning. Please join us in singing number 787. The temple rang with golden coins, number 787. Yes. Okay. Thank you. This mass is offered for Bill Ryan, and I invite you to own your own intentions in the silence of your hearts. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery worthily, we will call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Receive our prayer. You are seated. 
seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously creep from us our adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. We ask the Israel Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephathia. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elisha said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. fidelity forever who does justice to those who are oppressed it is he who gives bread to the hungry the Lord who sets prisoners free praise the Lord my soul praise the opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. Praise the Lord, my soul, praise the Lord. upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Sion, from age to age. Praise the Lord, my soul.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sins by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Because of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins with a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings of today, in a special way, emphasize the value of giving until it hurts. And the recognition that each of us has something significant and valuable to give. I have come to learn from my own experiences that in many situations, what keeps us from offering or giving or supporting 
or contributing to the community is not so much that we don't have the goodwill, but in many situations we believe that what we have can offer is insignificant. We look at ourselves, we think we don't have all the best things to offer, even in relationships. Sometimes we look at ourselves as individuals, we look at our baggages we are carrying, and we believe we are not even worthy to be in a relationship, let alone to love. But the readings of today emphasizes otherwise that God seeks each of us to contribute how much we have. That the value of a gift is not so much how much you have given, but how much that is left after you have given. The value of every gift is not how much you give, but how much that is left after you have given. In the first reading, we saw this widow who is very poor. She lacked food. She didn't have much food. And Elijah had every other place to go to ask for help, to ask for food. He chose this woman who had nothing. And asked her, give me something to eat. And the woman told her, well, I have only one single meal. And if I eat it, I will die. And he made a promise. Don't be scared. Give, and you will never lack. In the gospel of today, we saw this woman who also made some significant offer. And what touched me the most in both two is that, in the first reading, what the woman needed most was food. And what did she give? Food. In the gospel, what the widow needed most was money. What did she give? money. So the value of gift is giving that thing that is most important to you, giving unto have nothing to give anymore. It's not just about money. It could be anything. For instance, there are some people who may have hurt you severally. You find it difficult to forgive. You have gotten to the breaking point. That is exactly when God is asking you to forgive even more. It could be the difficulty of setting an example, good example for your kids. is always training and demanding to always be the good example, maybe to your student or to your kids. Is God inviting you to not stop, continue stretching, continue making more effort? Some of us grew, grew up in a family that we were never loved or respected. We find it difficult to actually value, the, to understand why should I continue to respect this individual who never for one day treated me as a human being. And God is telling you, continue to respect them. Especially now, we don't really find the value of respecting them. So God is calling all of us, dear friends in Christ, do not give up. Keep on giving. Ask yourself, what is it in my life that I find most difficult to give? What is it in my life that I find most difficult to let go? That is exactly what, where God is calling you to grow. When we learn to give, it frees us. The widow gave up all the money she had into the treasury and left home on Ekimbad. She left home free. She left home not evaluating her self-worth, but what she ever had remaining. Our life becomes more meaningful when we begin to evaluate the value and quality of our existence, not by what we have, but how much we have been able to touch lives. Dear friends, in many situations, especially as Christians, we'll be wondering, why is God making so much demand from me? Why me always? 
God is making that demand because you are special to, in God's eyes. Because it makes no sense that Elijah would go to this woman who was poor when there were so many rich people around. But God wanted to manifest himself in the life of this widow who had nothing. So when God is making more demand from you, maybe giving you kids that are difficult, maybe your husband has been difficult, or your wife has been difficult, maybe your nearest neighbor is very difficult and you continue to be tested, your patience continues to be tested. And you ask, why me? It is you because God wants to manifest his wisdom his power through you. Therefore, do not be afraid to give. I believe in one God. intercession knowing that God calls us to trust in him let us bring our prayers before him for the church throughout the world may the grace of God continue to strengthen and nourish her let us pray to the Lord, Lord for all who serve in elected office May the Lord inspire them in serving the needs of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle to obtain food security and stable housing, may the Lord bring them nourishment and safety. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here today, may the Lord bless us and make us holy in his sight. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died in the light of faith, may the mercy of our loving Lord usher them into the fullness of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord this Mass is specially intended for Bill Ryan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for other intentions we now hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. May we ask our Mother Mary to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving Father, we ask that you hear the prayer as we offer this day. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please join us in singing the offertory hymn, number 723, We Walk by Faith, number 723. Dear friends in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts of our here, that celebrating in misery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is true right and just of our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is us, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clear. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, Holy Lord, a fountain for holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them, light it you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Kevin our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed is her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor are just forever and ever. Amen.
experience from man and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as well with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, The only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Please join us in singing the communion hymn. Number 915, one bread, one body. Number 915. <laughs> Yeah. 
Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift to Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you all. I thank the choir. I thank the reader, the ushers, and the person in charge of uh, live streaming. Thank you all. And then I thank myself. <laughs> I, have, I am Father Gabriel Ezema. I, I reside at Holy Family. And I am here today because Father is not available. He went to mission for the parish at St. Pius, right? Hmm? Did I get it correct? So he was on a mission trip there just for the parish. So that's why I decided to show my face, and I hope you liked my face, right? <laughs> Thank you all. I wish all of you a blessed and happy week. The Lord be with you. And more mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Say, Michael. Please join us in singing our closing hymn. Number 657. Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 657. Hark the light.